Good evening, Kaidan lovers. Welcome to part two of Kamae Tachi no Yoru, here on Sounds Like Kaidan Time. <clears throat> Ten minutes later. All the guests staying at Spur, as well as all the staff, gathered in the first full lounge. To be exact, if it was actually everyone, it would have also included that corpse, but... However, the only people to have seen the corpse were me and Mari and Kobayashi-san, and that's it. All the other people that were upstairs were chased out of the room by Kobayashi-san. Neither of the three of us had any time to explain what we'd seen. It was all we could manage to prepare some hot tea and sip it while shaking with fear. Hey, come on, what, why don't you tell us what you saw up there? Midori, using a somewhat irate tone of voice, said. I stole a glance at Kobayashi-san, but it seemed as if what Midori had said had barely entered his ears. I answered her. He's dead. He's been cut into pieces. He's dead. The sound of somebody swallowing could be heard in the room. Cut into pieces? What do you mean? Midori must have thought it was some kind of sick joke when she asked pointedly. I don't know what to tell you, Midori. Before I knew it, my voice had risen almost to a scream. He was cut into pieces. His head, his arm, his legs, they were all cut into pieces and they were on the ground there. One of the women screamed and started crying. Upon looking, it was Aki. What kind of person was Tanaka-san? Was that his name? Midori-san asked in a quiet voice. Yeah, I think so. He had a really weird color to his face. So I think it probably was him. Midori's eyes suddenly narrowed. You don't think it could be just a really well-made doll or something like that? Maybe someone's just playing a trick, you know, with that threatening letter and everything. There's no mistaking a doll and a human being, Midori. I remembered seeing his arms cut in half and I felt a shiver throughout my whole body. But, you know, with movies and that kind of thing, the CG and all that kind of special technology, it's pretty amazing these days, you know? Maybe it could have been something like that. Hmm. Being told something like that, I felt my confidence slowly slip away. It was a human. I know it. There was blood and everything. So Kobayashi-sen said decisively, 
and Aki raised her voice once again. So that threatening letter was real. I want to go home. Now that you mention it, I heard something. Something about Komaitachi. Mihimoto-san said, licking his lips. Kamaitachi? I asked him. Yeah. Do you know about the Kamaitachi? You know, they say around here, since long ago, clothes have been cut, people have been getting injured. From nothing, it seems. People from around here say that it's some kind of fox that carries a saw with him. Some kind of living being like that. And they call it the Kamaitachi. Kimoto-san spoke in a low voice and cast his eyes around the group at all of us. However, after a short moment of silence, Kobayashi-san snickered. Are you saying that the Kamaitachi is to blame for Tanaka-san getting cut into pieces? Don't be stupid. Mari was quiet as well. And besides, Kamaitachi, that's just a natural phenomenon, right? Some kind of vacuum happens and things get cut, you know? That kind of thing. I've heard about that happen. But Mikimoto-san wouldn't budge. In any case, that's one of the explanations. But... I'm not sure whether yokai are natural phenomena or not. I just know that things like that happen. But I've heard of people getting cuts and injuries and clothes being cut and that kind of thing. But I can't imagine a body being cut into pieces. I said. If it's a yokai, then you have to be open to all possibilities. Don't look at me like that. It's not like I believe in yokai or anything like that. Let's just think of it as a natural phenomenon. For example, listen to the sound of this wind. If the wind's this strong, Maybe it wouldn't be so strange if some sort of vacuum was created. A vacuum that is unlike regular vacuums. Don't you think so? A, a wind that breaks glass and cuts the body of a human standing next to a window into pieces in a split second? Is that really the kind of wind that's blowing out there? It's plasma! I'm sure it's plasma. Said Aki, with a terrified expression on her face. Aki, what's plasma? Keiko-san said, as if making fun of her. I'm not really sure, but I'm sure that's what it is. In any case, that would explain everything. I can't imagine how that would explain anything. But uh, I nodded, taken in by her confidence. So what does that make that threatening letter then? Was it a human that wrote that? Surely it was. Yeah, but, you know. It... 
having been told by Kanako. Aki looked a little troubled and started to cry again. Hey, uh, I've been hearing this word since just before, but what is this whole thing about a threatening letter? Kayama-san, seeming a bit puzzled, cut into the conversation. Kobayashi-san looked at me. But... It seemed as if we couldn't hide the fact about the threatening letter anymore, so... Well, we decided to talk about what happened. Well, to tell the truth... Upon hearing the story, everybody in the room was lost for words. So that really happened, huh? Mikimoto-san said quietly. You know, you really got to tell us about that kind of thing, Kayama-san said, grumbling. There's no helping things that are said and done, though. For the time being, let's uh, just get in contact with the police. We have to. The police! Suddenly, I realized that I hadn't even realized up until now. We'd seen such a strange and unusual thing. I wasn't thinking in a usual manner at all. Kobayashi-san seemed to have the same reaction, and flustered, he ran to pick up the phone. Taking the receiver in his hands, he put it towards his ear. But then he started to press on the... What do you call that? <laughs> on the phone the hanger-upper on the phone, <laughs> on the hook. That's no good. There's no sound. I don't think the phones are through. The what? Kayama-san said, standing up. That's no good. Well, I think somewhere the phone line's been cut. Kobayashi-san looked at the receiver that wasn't making any sound with an annoyed expression. We can't use the phone. That fact started to permeate itself within my mind. But it took some time. That means that as long as the snowstorm doesn't cease, we won't be able to contact the police. Not only that, but it also means that we won't be able to get down the mountain. Kayama-san suddenly la laughed out loud. Ah, that's right, I brought my mobile phone. We can just use that. Kobayashi-san said, It's no good, Kayama-san. The phone signal doesn't reach all the way up here. I don't think you can use your mobile phone. So, what does that mean? What are we supposed to do? There's a murderer around here and there's nothing we can do? murderer. Hearing those words, it sounded like I'd just been pierced with emptiness. 
I'd been so distracted by the unusual nature of the corpse. And I hadn't been thinking that it was a murder in itself. Not to mention that everyone had been fussing about kamaitachi and plasma and that kind of thing. Or maybe I'd been trying not to think about it. But there's no way that was an accident or even suicide. Considering it as a murder was definitely the most natural way of thinking about it. Somebody killed Tanaka-san and cut his body into pieces. And it was just like Kayama-san said, thinking about the weather, it's incredibly possible that the culprit is still around here somewhere. Do you think someone could get down the mountain in this kind of weather? I asked. And Kobayashi-san and Toshio both shook their head at the same time. No way. The one that answered was Toshio. Mikimoto-san arrived just before, but that was a miracle. If you were to walk down the mountain, you'd freeze to death. But if you used a car, you'd be stuck in the middle of the storm. And if you had bad luck, you'd fall into a lake. So does that mean that killer is trying to hide somewhere in this guest house? That's the only thing they can do in order to survive, right? Everybody held their breath. Even Aki, who had been crying the whole time, showed an expression of absolute fear. Toshio, as if he was angry, stood right up. Okay, then what? Are we supposed to just spend the night with someone who cut a body into pieces? You gotta be kidding me. He's right. If there's a murderer in our midst, there's no way we'd be able to sleep. We gotta do something, said Kayama-san. Nodding. Some, what do you mean by something? What can we do? Kobayashi-san said with a puzzled look. Well, we've got to catch him. Seeing as the police can't get here, we've got to catch him ourselves, don't we? Just, just wait a second. It was Mikimoto-san who spoke up with a shiver in his voice. You know, like, someone who murders someone and cuts the body into pieces has got to be the worst kind of murderer, you know? R rather than trying to look for him, isn't it better just to stay here with everyone together? As long as we're all together like this, it doesn't matter how bad the crime is. They won't be able to do it again, after all. So, you saying that you're gonna stay here awake the whole night? Because if you go to sleep, well, we might all die, Kayama-san said, incredulously. while the rest of the women wore an expression of fear. Fl 
flustered. I cut into the conversation. No way. Even the most evil of people wouldn't do something like that. I think it's probably necessary to lock all the doors, at least. Well, I don't know about locking the doors, because maybe they're already inside. Don't be stupid. Where would they have entered from? Kobayashi san said with surprise. I don't know. But, you know, they managed to kill someone without us realizing. So, surely they must have been able to get in without us realizing as well. But, Kobayashi san struggle to find words. Well, now that you mention it, the window is broken, right? Maybe they came in through the window. You know, the window at the back they haven't moved all the snow from below it, so it wouldn't be that difficult to enter through the second floor window. Even if that were the case, maybe they've already ran back out of that window, back outside. In any case, the door's locked, so... I said what I thought was obvious. As if we'd know something like that. The door was a push button lock type of door. If they came into the window, All they would have had to have done after that was push the button on the door and close it. Maybe they were able to hide in one of the empty rooms on the second floor. And then when we were all on the second floor, maybe they came back downstairs. To be sure, I think I am someone's right. If you push the button from the inside of the room, the door is locked. All of the doors in all of the guest rooms in Spru are all that type of door. <laughs> but even if the door was locked, that doesn't mean... So if the, if the door was locked, that doesn't necessarily mean that the culprit escaped through the window. But having said that, everybody had just searched the room on the second floor. Searched all of their rooms, I suppose. I can't imagine that they would have been able to descend down onto the, onto the first floor without being seen by one of us. Well, in any case, shouldn't we all get some kind of thing that can be used as a weapon? Marty, who's... who'd been keeping silent for quite a while, opened her mouth. I was surprised at her suggestion, but that's exactly right, young lady. You never know what might happen. 
All right, let's get something. Everybody agreed with that opinion straight away. Although, in a guest house like this, there's not really anything that can be used as a weapon. The thing that everybody prepared in the end was ski sticks. What do you call those? Ski. <laughs> I'm not sure what you call them. Ski. Ski poles. That's right. Ski poles, fruit knives, and mops. Knives, for example, like kitchen knives and that kind of thing, were actually dangerous, so we decided not to use them. Mm, nothing much to rely on, really. Alright, we'll form teams and search the guest house. Under the beds, in the closets, the bathtubs. We don't know where they could be hiding. Suddenly, Kayao-san had become the leader. I guess that that's a CEO type of thinking. There were five men. Me, Mikimoto-san, Kobayashi-san, Kayama-san, and Toshio. This is all of us. The women were all going to stay together and see us off. <laughs> what does this mean? Ah. So he says, here he says, um, I felt like getting getting them to knit us a soldier's belt. So I guess this is, I don't know much about this. This is, um, Senin Bari. Second, a, a thousand stitch belt. I assume it's something that uh, women made for men that were going off to war. So it feels like all the men are leaving the women behind to um, go off onto the battlefield. And uh, so as like a lucky charm, he wants them to, <laughs> to knit all the men one of these send in buddy, which is a thousand, thousand stitch belt, built with a thousand stitches. There you go. Don't know if it'll do any good though. Take care, Money Sun said. Even those few words were enough to support me, <laughs> to ease my mind. So, where should we begin? Kobayashi Sun said, asking everyone. Mm, I suggested. Hmm, we can start from the first floor, or we can we can start from the second floor. Hmm. Up until now, we've been st sticking with A, so let's let's stick with A here as well. Let's just have a look. Okay, so here, this is the flow chart. So here we can kind of we can move to different points in the story. Um, we've got some options and we can save here. Yeah, let's save. Let do that. I don't think I've saved yet. Alright. 
So here in the save file, you can see the where it says one. That's how many playthroughs you've done, I, I believe. Could be number of saves. I guess we'll find out. Um, and then there's kind of a, a counter of how many endings you've got. So there's there's kind of two types there. One of them sort of is like the sign for complete. So you've completed, you know, a proper storyline or something. The other one just says ending. So maybe it's sort of like a bad end or something like that. We haven't got one of them yet. So, so if we go to move from the flow chart, yeah, we can see. So we've kind of progressed through quite a bit already. It's been taking, so we can see like which selections we chose. We're on the pink line. We've just been choosing A's. There's quite a lot, isn't there? We can go back to any selection. So I guess, hmm, we'll have to find out. Yeah, I guess maybe there are a lot of endings. Well, so that's what the flow chart looks like. All right, so let's go with the first floor. Let's search the first floor. All right, everyone, let's start with the first floor. I said decided, decisively. On the first floor, there was the lounge. So aside from that, there was the cafeteria and the kitchen. Then there was the staff room where Midori and Toshio lived. There was Kobayashi-san and his wife's room. And then there was the drying room. Drying room? I wonder what that is. Kansoshitsu. Yeah, the drying room. I wonder what you do in a drying room. I guess you just dry stuff. That's a bit suspicious. So we would look and search all of those rooms one by one. As Kobayashi-san turned the doorknob, Mikimoto-san and I gripped our weapons. You ready? I'm gonna open it. No sooner had the both of us nodded than Kobayashi-san opened the door and hid in the shadow. Then both of us, with our ski balls and our mops, rushed into the room. In this manner, we searched each one of the rooms, even below the beds. Mm. <clears throat> if all of us were to enter a single room, maybe the culprit could have escaped when our backs were turned. So, only Mikimoto-san and I entered the rooms. I was pretty scared at first, but once we started repeating the same routine over and over again, I started to gather courage. It seemed like Mikimoto-san was the same. His colour had returned to his face. It doesn't matter what kind of person it is, as long as there's five of us, we'll be fine, right? Y yeah, that's right. Five, five is a good number. There were no signs of anyone on the first floor. All that remained was the second floor. To be honest, seeing as the second floor was where the crime happened, it felt like the second floor was a lot more dangerous than the first. But 
perhaps it seemed like everyone was beginning to think, think that the possibility that the culprit had entered the guest house was, wasn't really that possible. In contrast to before, we were able to relax as we went up to the second floor. You know, I may look like this, but when I was in high school, I used to do judo. If the criminal shows his face, I'll come at him from behind and make sure that he doesn't make any sound, Kayama-san said. It was strange that he'd say something like that after all this time. If that's the case, then why don't you stand at the front of the group? That's what I wanted to say, but I decided not to. Heading up to the second floor, using the same method, we started searching each of the rooms. But just as we thought, there was not even, there was nothing, no one under the beds, in the closets, not even a mouse. Kobayashi-san, what, what's all that door about? Kayama-san said pointing to the door at the end of the hall. That's, uh, that's a closet with uh, our cleaning gear. Mm, I guess it would be possible for someone to hide in there, but... As we drew closer to the door, a sound like ksha happened from the closet. We all stopped moving with a shock. Mikimoto-san, his eyes wide, cast a glance in my direction. Did you hear that? That's what his eyes seemed to say. Swallowing carefully, I nodded very slowly. The hand that I gripped my ski ball with started to sw become wet with sweat. Kobayashi sang with his hand on the doorknob, cast a glance around everyone in the group. Me, Mikimoto-san, Toshio-san, and Kayama-san, who was standing a little bit further away. All four of us nodded. <coughs> that moment, as we heard the sound of the door open, there was a black shutter that ran out of the closet. Oh, it's a cat! Ah, that's Jenny. That's where she was. Toshio-san said. Jenny? Uh, it's a cat we keep here. I hadn't seen her lately, so I was wondering where she got to. So she was in this closet the whole time. Hmm, the old cat trick. So that's it? There aren't any more rooms? As you return to the lounge, I asked Kobayashi-san. Well, there's the wine cellar, but uh, that's locked. Kobayashi-san answered <clears throat> after thinking for a while. 
So what does that mean? That he wasn't here after all? That's a shame. I was looking forward forward to sending him off to hell. Kayama-san said, rubbing his hands together. That was Kayama-san. He was good at speaking, but not much else. When we returned to the lounge, Kyoko had prepared some coffee for us. So there was no one there, was there? Mani-san said, looking at our expressions. So I guess that means that they escaped outside. I suppose so. Toshio-san answered. Everyone seemed to be wearing an expression of both relief and anxiety. It was to be expected. In any case, even though nothing dangerous had happened, we couldn't say with absolute certainty that there was no one hiding somewhere in the guest house. And besides, even not now, but perhaps later on, somebody might come in in the middle of the night. No matter how, no matter how strongly we fasten the locks, all you need to do is break a window to get inside. Wait a sec. I was puzzled. From the beginning, we had been thinking that the criminal broke a window and came in. But is that really the case? Okay, so we have our first kind of... um, option to... um cast our own judgment on what might have happened. So we, with our A option, we can say that um, perhaps the culprit had been in the guest house since long before. Hmm. Or B is, I realized that amongst us, there was someone who did not have an alibi. Or there was more than one person that did not have an alibi. I think both of these are are pretty feasible. What do you reckon? I kind of want to want to find out the uh, what happens after both of these. Um. Well, maybe let's just stick with our A path and say that perhaps the criminal is someone who was in here for quite a long time. Perhaps before we arrived. Let's see. Perhaps the culprit could have been inside the guest house already since a while ago. And then perhaps he spent quite a lot of time cutting Tanaka-san into pieces. If you didn't do something like that, then it's hard to imagine how someone would be able to cut human into pieces. Or is there some way to do it that I'm just not sure about? Some kind of method with which to do that to a corpse in the short space of time between when the sound of the glass breaking happened and when we ran up to see what had happened. We have three three options here uh, with regards to this 
predicament. We could say that that's impossible. There's no way to do that. B says, um, if you use a, a banana trick. I don't know what that means. <laughs> a banana trick. Hmm? Maybe that's just a joke. Um, or C is, perhaps in the room, there was some kind of device that would allow something like that. Well, I guess that's not Im impossible, but uh, I don't know. It seems unlikely. Let's just say it's impossible. It's, it's, you can't cut up a body into pieces in that short amount of time. No. Nope. There's no way you can do that. The culprit definitely has been in the guest house since long before. So when? And from where? How did they manage to get inside the guest house without anybody realizing? With all of the doors and windows locked, there's only the main entrance and the exit in the drawing room. That's all there is. They're the only places you can enter from. But if it was from one of those places, then they'd definitely be able to, they, there definitely would have been someone that realized. Even if all of the guests had been in the back of the house, at least Kobayashi-san would have known who was coming in and out. Which means... Um, there are three choices. We can say that it's the basement. They dug a hole. Huh? Oh, they dug a hole underground got into the underground room and entered that way. Seems a bit implausible, but I don't know. Or they they didn't come inside. They killed Tanaka-san outside. Could be possible. Or they entered through the main entrance, but nobody saw them. Mm, yeah, that, that so sees sees out. It wouldn't be one of the two. I don't know. Should we just go with A? Let's just see where A leads us. I kind of feel a bit weird about this option though. Don't know if I don't know if there is a basement room. It's not, is there? I don't think they said anything about a basement room except for the wine cellar. But the wine cellar is locked. What's the deal? The basement. Somebody dug a hole underground and snuck into the basement. It's the basement room, I said, standing up. What's all this all of a sudden? What, what's with the basement room? Mani san said, surprised. I know how the culprit got in. Through the basement room. They dug a hole and dug through to the basement room and entered that way. Basement room? But the door down to the basement is locked from this side. Even if they were able to get down into the basement wine cellar, they wouldn't be able to come up here, Kobayashi-san said, in opposition. That's as I thought. <laughs> But the door on the wine cellar, it uses that old type of lock, doesn't it? If they would use like a, a stick or something like that to fiddle with a lock and then, you know, if it was someone that had that kind of technique, then maybe they could use a hairpin or something to open it. 
it, that wasn't something that I could do, but surely someone who was able to do that. Hmm, that's true. There isn't that kind of lock on the door, but... Well, in any case, let's just have a look, I said. And Kobayashi-san, with a sour look on his face, ended up agreeing. Oh, basement, I don't like the basement. It's dark down there. Trying to fortify myself with the wine. As Kobayashi-san opened the door leading down to the basement room, we stared into a dark staircase. There was kind of a wet, cold air coming up from below. Kobayashi-san flicked the switch on the wall and the light on the stairs lit up. There was no way I'd be going downstairs, even if I was the one to suggest it. Oh, other way around. Of course, I was the one to go downstairs because I was the person that suggested it in the first place. Swallowing, I began to climb down the stairs, step by step. Oh, I hate that sound. Even though it was a wine cellar, it didn't really smell like a wine cellar. It smelled like an old bookshop. When I got to the bottom of the stairs, underneath the cold, dim light of the light bulb, I saw shelves of wine all lined up together, covered in dust. In that wall somewhere there, there's a hole open. Mm -hmm. There's a hole somewhere on the wall, I said to Kobayashi san and the others at the top of the stairs as they climbed down. There's a hole? Kobayashi san craned his neck and said in a doubtful voice, Let's split up and look around. I'll take the right side while Kobayashi san, you take the left. Marie and Kayama san and the others swallowed carefully as they came down the stairs. It seems like they'd come to watch us as we searched the wine cellar. Banging on the wooden walls, I searched carefully from the top to the bottom. Making it, across, making it across half the room, coming from the back of the room, Kobayashi-san stood with an unpleasant look on his face. Something the matter? Did you find anything? How about you, Kobayashi-san? He shook his head, silent. There's no way... Did you make sure to 
search carefully. If you don't believe me, you can look yourself. Kobayashi-san seemed a little bit nonplussed. It's not like I didn't trust Kobayashi-san, but I had to go and look. With greater care than before, I started banging on the walls, making sure to look out for strange marks in the wood and places with an odd sound. I made my way back to the stairs and then once more circled the room, searching every corner. There was nothing strange. But I couldn't believe it. I stood dumbfounded. So I guess nobody was able to come in through this way. Is that what this means? So that means the culprit has to be someone in our group. It can't be someone that's outside of the group. But when the crime was being committed, we were all in the lounge. Everyone returned to the lounge and I could hear them complaining about me the whole way there. I guess I messed up. Even Kobayashi-san and Mari looked at me with suspicion. I was a little bit embarrassed to see Kyoko pouring me another cup of coffee after mine had gone totally cold. Kyoko returned to the lounge and everybody started sipping their coffee. I tried to find some way to cheer everyone up. Wait a second. When that window broke, it wasn't everyone that was in the lounge. I suddenly realized something. The man next to me, sipping, delightfully sipping hot coffee. Toshio-san. Toshio-san would have been able to kill Tanaka-san. I took a good, hard, long look at his face. This university student, bright university student who loved skiing. Was that just a facade? Hmm? What's up? Toshio-san turned to look at me. Uh, yeah, nothing. I... Ah, oh, sugar. Sorry about that. Toshio-san took the sugar pot and handed it towards me. Ah, thanks. I took it from him and put sugar in my coffee. It would have been awkward to otherwise. It would have been awkward not to. It seemed like I had made a mis bit of a misunderstanding. It seemed like he had misunderstood. Hmm. <laughs> How'd you say that? Hmm. He misunderstood me. Could a nice man like this commit a crime like that? No, there's no way. 
no matter what kind of situation he's in, this person wouldn't have been able to kill someone and then cut the body up into pieces. I guess the culprit really did escape outside. I'm sure that the person that did this has no connection to any of the people that are gathered here. It was just a criminal. Yeah, I bet Tanaka-san himself was a Yakuza in any case. And he was just killed by a different Yakuza. I tried to convince myself of that fact. Suddenly, Kobayashi-san stood up. What's wrong? I asked. I'm going to look outside. Outside? Why? There might be some kind of sign left. Like footprints or a tire track, something like that. Toshio-san shook his head. Even if there was something like that, it would disappear straight away in this kind of snow. That's true, but... You know, perhaps the culprit is here. Maybe he's returned. It's not like we can just sit around doing nothing. Kobayashi-san said, painfully. Mm, another choice here. That we can go together with him. Or we can stay next to Mari. <laughs> Let's go with him. Why not? There might be something out there. Mm. I'll go with you, I said, standing up. Kayama-san, you'll come too, right? You can get in with your judo moves if you see him outside. I said sarcastically. My son somewhat responded. Mm, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, but it's cold outside. No, I don't like the cold. If you see him, chase him inside for me. And then I'll give him what for. But I wasn't sure whether giving someone what for was an actual judo move or not. In any case, me, Kobayashi-san, Toshio-san and Mikimoto-san, the four of us decided to take a look outside. Returning to our rooms to get changed, we all met in the foyer. Five minutes later, right on 10 o'clock. Wow, so it's not even not even 12 o'clock yet. It's not midnight. So the, the, the um, ominous message, the uh, premonition hasn't even, it's not even time for that yet. Whew. When the four of us were together, we put our shoes on, took our weapons, and headed outside. Uh, the moment we opened the door, wind, like a, a it's coming Sharp as a razor, the wind, together with the snow, began to descend upon us. Panicking, we put our hoods on and tie them tight with string. Let's go from the right and the left, around in a circle. Just once, Kobayashi-san said in a voice louder than the wind. Toru, you go around clockwise. 
Toshio, Mikimoto, you go the other direction. How does that sound? Everyone nodded. We took one step off the porch into a white hell. Splitting into two, we began walking through the snow, each one of our steps becoming submerged in the white. Don't you all be, uh, become sick, brother, now, will you? Kobayashi san said, shouting through the storm to Toshio san and us. But with the sound of the wind blowing through the trees, his voice disappeared. Even with our hoods tied tightly around the bottom, the wind came to cut us without reprimand. Ah, it's no good, we can't see anything. Even opening our eyes as hard as we could, faces into the wind, through the crazed white darkness, it was impossible to even see a meter ahead of us. The fingers that gripped my ski poles, even the gloves that I wore on them, began to freeze over. Kobayashi san! Kobayashi san! I began to panic when I realized that I lost sight of Kobayashi san. No matter where I looked, it was just snow, snow, snow. I couldn't even see the guest house. I lost all sense of direction. I... What do I do? I can... Just keep going around the right side. Or... I can try going around the left. Let's just keep going the route. That's, that's all we need to do. We're on the right now. In any case, I decided to continue around on the right. But the more I progressed, the less I found. All I could see was a whirlwind of snow. Kobayashi san, where are you? My voice shook with fear. Exposed to the wind, my cheeks began to freeze over. I... Uh, like so I can keep going forward, or I can return to where I came from. Uh, we're just going to go, hey, I'm going to keep going. Hopefully we, we come across something. I decided to keep moving forward. No matter how far I went, all I could see was snow. And just then, I heard something like a voice come from far away. I stopped and listened carefully. Someone was shouting my name. But I couldn't tell where it was coming from. I'm here! Where are you? I somehow managed to find out where the voice was coming from. It was incredibly hard work just walking through the snow. Even though it was cold enough 
to freeze both my hands and my legs. I was sweating all down my back and breathing heavily. I just managed to reach the behind of the building, the corner of the building, and Kobayashi-san's back entered my vision. Kobayashi-san! I called out to him, drawing closer. Mikimoto-san was collapsed at Kobayashi-san's feet. Toshio-san was trying to lift him up. What happened? What on earth happened here? Mm. Mikimoto-san had fallen over, began to groan. Looking closely, I could see that there was a red thread dripping down from his forehead. It was blood. That's... He was hit by someone. We've got to get him inside and get him some help. Toshio-san said. He was hit? By who? It sounded stupid the moment I asked it. It was clear that it was the person that killed Tanaka-san. If I wasn't so late, I could have caught him, Toshio-san said regretfully. Why did you separate? Kobayashi-san asked in an interrogative manner. Mm. Not to mention the fact that both Kobayashi-san and I had become separated as well. It couldn't be helped. We barely see anything in this weather. Trying to block the wind with my hand, I peered carefully. In the area where Mikimoto-san had fallen over, it seemed like there'd been some sort of fight. And the snow was... Snow, the snow sight showed signs of a struggle. But it was hard to tell whether there were any footprints or anything like that. Mm. Not only footprints from the criminal, but even our footprints. The fast blowing snow and wind covered them straight away. God damn it, if only we had a dog, Toshio-san said. His lips thin, staring out into the white darkness. What kind of sane individual would run off into a snowstorm like this. Just as I thought that, I felt a shiver running down my spine. What if there wasn't anyone else here besides us? Couldn't it have been Toshio-san that hit Mikimoto-san? Perhaps he lied about being late and hit Mikimoto-san with a mop. Let's just get him inside, Kobayashi-san said. Collecting all the weapons. He held Mikimoto-san's feet and Toshio-san held his shoulders. He was heavier than I thought. How could we possibly carry your body through 
a snowstorm that was nearly impossible to even walk through. Feeling wrecked with anxiety, we decided to head back in the direction that we came. That's not the right way, Korgash's son said in anger. It seemed like there was a back entrance. I was relieved. But even in this thick snowstorm, carrying a man that had completely lost consciousness was nearly impossible. Even carrying him 10 meters made my shoulders hurt so much I thought I was going to drop it. Looking over at Toshio-san, his teeth gritted. It seemed like he was struggling as well. Finally, the two of us stopped walking. Kobayashi san rang the doorbell. We couldn't see anything, but it had appeared we'd arrived at the back door. Quick, quickly, someone open up. As we waited impatiently, finally the door began to open. We collapsed inside, as if we were snowmans. Kyoko-san was inside, her hand over her mouth. Quick, quick, we need some help. Losing breath, that was all Kobayashi's son could say. Surprised, Kyoko didn't move for quite a while. But when she realized that there was blood coming from Yukimoto-san's forehead, she ran to the back and shouted, Midori, quick, come here. Finally, Midori and Kyoko returned and began to help carry Mikamoto-san inside. Toshio-san shut the back door. Unable to stand, I fell onto the floor. I wonder why he was attacked, though. Toshio-san said, once he regained his breath. Who knows? I guess the culprit appeared. It was all I could do to stop myself from saying it. You were the one that did it, weren't you? But that place we were in just before, that was right outside the room where the crime happened, right? The room where the body was. Maybe after they killed Tanaka-san, they ran out the window and were there the whole time. But then there'd be like a ice statue. Hmm, he was right. But I had lost all effort to try and listen to what Toshio-san had to say. Maybe he had come back for some reason. Besides, you know, they say that the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime, right? I replied half-heartedly. It was a half-hearted reply, but to my surprise, Toshio-san gave quite a considerable reply. 
That's it. That's what it is. The criminal came back to the scene of the crime. There must have been some reason for him to come back. Maybe he left behind some evidence or something like that. Maybe that was what was happening. What was he trying to get out by saying this kind of thing? Wasn't he the one that hit Mickey Mouse's son? Or perhaps the culprit is still outside. Or someone apart from Toshio-san. For example, Kobayashi-san? In any case, Kobayashi-san also had the opportunity to attack Mikimoto-san. He left me behind, sped up so that he could reach Mikimoto-san, and hit him. But even if he was able to hit Mikimoto-san, he wouldn't have been able to kill Tanaka-san. At the time of the incident, Kobayashi-san was in the lounge together with us. In any case, if the culprit was someone other than Toshio-san, then the only thing we could consider is that they'd run back outside. Either way, all we could do was assume at this point. Once Mikimoto-san regains consciousness, things will begin to clear up. At least, who hit him and what it was like. Even if he didn't see the face of the person that did it, We'd be able to get some sort of clue, right? Well, in any case, let's just head back to our rooms, Toshio-san said, standing up. Well, can you stand? I held my hand out and stood up. Thanks. Toshio-san went back to his own room. I watched him go back to his room and then headed towards the lounge. I didn't feel like showing my back to someone who could have murdered someone. When I passed by the lounge, Haruko and Mari were there together. Haruko is Kayama-san's wife, that's right. Where are the others? Uh, when you and the others went outside, Kayama-san went back to his room. Seemed like he wanted to try his mobile phone once again. Hmm. And Kanako and the others said they wanted to go to the toilet. All three of them together? Yeah. And Midori was taken back to Mikimoto-san's room together with Kobayashi-san. Oh yeah, I know about that. I realized that my clothes were soaked through from all the snow. Ah, I need to go and change. With that, I went upstairs to the second floor. Ah, Kayama-san. 
After changing my clothes and coming back out into the corridor, I bumped into Kayama-san. Ah, oh, it's you. Well, you did good out there. So how's the phone? The phone? Ah, you mean my mobile phone? Yeah, it's no good. I thought so. That's just as Kobayashi-san said. Ah, is that so? Mari and Haruko were still in the lounge, just as I left them. I suppose everyone else was in Mikimoto-san's room. Hey, fo! Kayama-san sat down on the sofa. Thinking that the sofa was a little bit too crowded, I decided to sit down on the stairs. So, what was it like? Outside, I mean. Anything strange? Uh, Kayama-san was in his room the whole time, so it seemed like he didn't know anything. There's no use worrying about that. It's Mikimoto-san. He was attacked by someone. What? Kayama-san furrowed his eyebrows. Someone? What do you mean by someone? Did they already get away? Yeah. Well, the, we didn't see anyone. Only Mikimoto-san. Both Mari and Haruko also had a look of unease on their face as they listened into the conversation. So, is it bad? His injury, I mean. Or is he... It seemed like he couldn't bring himself to say the words, dead. I'm not sure. At the moment, Kobayashi-san and Midori are tending to him. Mm, I hope this person isn't planning to kill us one by one. Kayama-san said. Another ridiculous thing to say. Both Mari and Haruko also had a look of fear on their face, faces. Mm. So we can say, yeah, perhaps. Or we could say, don't be stupid. Dismiss it as a joke. Well, well we could keep descending into fear. I mean, let's do that. Why not? Go with A. Hmm. I guess so. Maybe that might be the case. I said, shaking with fear. Toru, you too, Kayama-san. Mari-san reprimanded me with a loud voice. Don't say stupid things like that. It's not like he's a serial killer. And it's not like they'd do something like that to each and every one of us. But Kayama-san did have kind of a point. Well, in any case, even if everyone gets killed, we've got no choice but to just wait in this guest house until the snowstorm stops. We can't get in contact with the police either, so... I guess they have time to think about an escape plan. That's... that's just... that's ridiculous. Marty, with a pained expression, started to shout. But either way you looked at it, what Kayama-san was saying... It was plausible. Escaping from his guest house 
into the snow outside. It was suicide any way you looked at it. Besides, you could hide somewhere, wait until someone left the guest house. Hmm. In any case, they could do it that way either, as, as well. With Mickey Motosan as well, perhaps there was a different reason. Maybe someone was after him for a completely different reason. If I was the culprit... Mm, he was the first person to enter my vision, so I attacked him. Perhaps it wasn't just that though. I gradually started to feel like what Kayama-san was saying was correct. But I didn't want to scare Muddy any more than she already was. I made sure to say this on purpose. Well, uh, that doesn't mean that that's the case. Besides, even if that was the case, if we don't go outside, then we're fine. We just stay together as much as we can and make sure that none of us are left alone. But Marty was quick to debate. But we can't use the phone. So how are we supposed to call for help if we can't get outside? Well, anyway, we'll be fine if we just wait for morning. Nobody can live out there in that cold. All the way till morning. Well, if that's the case, then... Hmm. This is difficult to translate. Ah. Mm-hmm. If that's the case, wouldn't they just come and attack us out of desperation? Well, it seemed like I failed in my attempts to help Mario relax. As we talked, Kobayashi-san and his wife descended from the second floor. Ah, Kobayashi-san. How is everything? How's Mikimoto-san? Well, his consciousness is back. But he had a dark expression on his face. Perhaps it wasn't good. He didn't see anything, apparently. Someone attacked him just out of nowhere. It seemed like his dark expression wasn't about Miki Mato-san's injuries, but rather about the fact that he couldn't find out who the criminal was. So 
so is he okay then? Hmm, I wonder. Hmm. He says he feels dizzy. So it's possible he might have a concussion. Kobayashi san said, shaking his head. But in any case, we can't be sure until the doctor looks at him. At least, uh, he hasn't broken anything. Nothing's happening with his head or anything like that. Whereabouts on his head was he attacked? Marty asked a strange question. Whereabouts? Well, it was on the right side of his forehead. Hmm. Sorry, not forehead, temple. On his right temple, so here. Why do you ask? Thinking deeply, Marty began to whisper softly. So that means that he was hit from behind on his right temple. Which means that the culprit's right-handed. Wait a second. It, it, it could have been from the front as well, not just from the back. If it was just from the back... then Toshio-san would look mighty suspicious. Huh? But he said that he couldn't see who did it. So doesn't it mean that it came from the back? Well, you don't know how bad that snowstorm was, Marty. That's why you're saying something like that. It was hard enough even to just... Look through the snow. You can't even see one foot ahead of you. But if someone was standing right in front of you, you'd see who was hitting you. So it's got to be from the back, right? As we were talking, Toshio-san made an appearance. Flustered, I said... Well, even if it wasn't from the front, it could have been from the side, or even from above. Above? I wasn't even thinking when I said above, but... I started to feel like maybe... That made sense. Toshio-san sat down on the sofa, as if he barely realized that we were speaking about that. Hey, Mr. Ona, how's, Kob how's Mikimoto-san doing? Well, by my eyes, it seems like he's doing okay, but... If he has some kind of internal hemorrhaging, then... Perhaps he won't be fine come morning. So did he see who did it? Seems like he didn't. I somehow felt like Toshio san was relieved upon hearing that. Or was that just my mind playing tricks on me? Ah, I see. So, that means that we, we don't know what kind of thing this culprit might do from now on. So I guess everyone should just stay together as much as possible. Huh? Stopping himself mid-sentence, Toshio-san cast a glance around everyone in the room. Where are the women? 
I haven't seen Midori either. Oh, I thought Midori came down earlier, but Kobayashi-san answered. But those women... I guess it is a little late for them to be coming back from the toilet. The three of them are together, so I don't think anything serious has happened, but... Wait, Minuri-san hasn't come down yet. Isn't she still upstairs? Mani corrected Kobayashi-san's words. She was in the lounge the whole time, so she would know. She hasn't come down yet? Don't tell me she's gone to the room with the body in it. I asked Kobayashi-san with a puzzled look on my face. The room with the body? Why would she go... Maybe she's curious about something. She said so, didn't she? I tried to stop her telling her that it wasn't worth looking, but... I'll go and call her, Toshio-san said, standing up. I didn't show it, but inside... I was panicking. Was it really okay to let him go upstairs alone? I didn't want to go with him by myself though. What should I do? I'll go. They might be sleeping, those women. In the time it took me to make up my mind, Mighty Sana had gotten up off the couch. I was relieved, but just then, a new fear began to grip me. Perhaps I should go with Mari. Or keep an eye on Toshio-san. I thought there would be a choice there, but there's not. Hmm. Forgetting about the dilemma I was dealing with. Huh. Paying no mind to the dilemma I was dealing with, Marty quickly headed up to the second floor. It was just then that I found myself gripped by a terrifying thought. Maybe the culprit was under the impression that Mikimoto-san saw his face. So... Hmm. So maybe he, he'd come back to put a stop to it. He'll bump into Mari as she goes up to the second floor. Mari's in danger. Mari! What? What's the matter, Toru? Hearing Kobayashi-san's voice, I realized that I'd stood up. Uh, nothing, really. Wondering, as I wondered whether I should go and check on the situation, Marty had already disappeared upstairs. What's wrong? Well, it's those women, they're... They said that they'd prefer to be alone, just the three of them. 
said that they can't trust anyone else. What's that supposed to mean? What do they mean they can't trust anyone else? Surprised, Kobayashi-san returned the question. And Mari-san struggled to answer. Well, basically, the killer could be amongst us. That's what they're thinking. It could be one of us. The only people that were surprised to hear this were Kobayashi-san, Kyoko, and Haruko. Probably everyone else had already thought that that was a possibility. Don't be stupid. Why would someone kill someone they'd never seen or heard of before? Kobayashi-san ridiculed the thought. How do you know they don't know each other? Kayama-san said in response. Kayama-san, don't tell me you're... No, 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 no. I didn't do it. But you, me, or anyone else... We don't have any proof that we don't know each other, do we? Perhaps someone amongst us knows someone else in the group. Puzzled, Kobayashi-san cast a glance around at everyone in the room. You... Are all of you thinking like that as well? That the culprit didn't run outside, but it's actually someone here? One of us? Is that what you think? I nodded, trying not to look at Toshio-san's face. It seemed like that was something that Kobayashi-san struggled to comprehend. But that's... that's impossible. I mean, think about it. Which one of us had the opportunity to do something like that? Kill someone and then cut them up like that? Do you know how long something like that would take? So we've got to decide between A is You'd probably be able to do it if you had around 30 minutes B is 10 minutes Seems a bit half-hearted And C is just like mm, 30 minutes How long would it take to, to cut up It would take longer than 30 minutes for sure Let's just go A. Let's see where this A path takes us. Well, if you had 30 minutes, I guess you'd be able to do it more or less, right? I said, after thinking for a while. Although, I wasn't thinking about it for that long. If you're good at it, I guess maybe that's all the time you need. Kobash Sun said, nodded. Was there anyone that had that much time after dinner? Midori and Toshio and me and Kyoko were, of course, cleaning up in the kitchen. And, well, I thought everyone else was here. Wouldn't the most natural thing to be... It would be 
the most natural thing to consider it as someone from the outside that had come in to commit the crime. be seen when the glass broke. Up until then, I... I doubted Toshio-san and Toshio-san only. But the more I thought about it, it seemed like he wouldn't actually had, have had that much time to cut someone into pieces. I'm pretty sure the dinner ended at about 8 o'clock. Right, because when he looked at his clock, it was 7.55, right? When we left the cafeteria, there was all the fuss about the threatening letter from Kanako. I mean, Kanako was making all the fuss, obviously not. And after that... The Kayamas came down from upstairs. And then Kobayashi-san and his wife, as well as the three office ladies, were together. And then Mikimoto-san arrived late at about 8.30. After that... Everybody was in the lounge until the incident happened, except for Toshio-san. Thinking about it that way, hmm, I thought that maybe, perhaps he did have enough time to commit the crime. But I didn't tell anyone that that's what I was thinking. Ah! I suddenly realized that there was an incredibly important point everyone was overlooking. Wait a second. Kobayashi-san, you just said that... Everyone that's here, out of everyone here, Nobody had enough time to cut a dead body into pieces. That's what you said, right? So, if that's the case, when did the culprit commit the crime? When did they enter the guest house? And when did they kill Tanaka-san? When? Well, as if I had known something like that, Kobayashi san said, puzzled. Okay, well, let's forget about the time. Where did they come in from? The windows were all closed properly, right? If they were to enter through one of the proper entrances in the building, they would have definitely been seen by someone. Why, well, he broke the window on the second floor and entered that way, didn't he? Kyoko-san said, surprised. When we heard the sound of the grass breaking was right before we discovered the dead body, right? By the time we set foot in that room, there was only about 15 minutes. There's no way anybody could have cut a dead body into pieces in that span of time. I guess so. So, perhaps when they entered, 
Maybe they entered without breaking the window. What do you mean without breaking? Kukosang said, not following the conversation. Yeah. Maybe they opened the window and entered that way. Maybe it was Tanaka-san that did that. In other words, the victim invited the culprit inside? It seemed ridiculous, but it wasn't impossible. It was likely that the culprit and the victim didn't know each other. So if they didn't know that they were going to be killed, it's possible. If they entered the window sneakily, perhaps they were planning something evil, the two of them. Or maybe, what's this mean? Or maybe there was a falling out. Well, that means they could have entered at any time. After dinner or even before. Which means that... There was enough time to kill Tanaka-san and cut him into pieces. After he'd come back from finishing his meal. It seemed like there was a sense of relief in Toshio-san's voice. Perhaps he knew that he was being thought of as suspicious. Come to mention it, Toshio-san, as if suddenly remembering something, started to look around the room. Where's Midori? What happened to her? Oh. With a hand on her mouth, Mari suddenly stood up. I forgot to say, but I couldn't see Midori anywhere. Um, I couldn't bring myself to go into the room with a dead buddy, so I tried calling out, but there was no response. Everybody looked at each other. If the culprit came in through the second floor window, there's a possibility that they could do the same thing. The glass is already broken, in any case. Upon saying that, Kobayashi-san looks at a loss for words. Don't tell me Midori is... Well, we should... Do a proper search for her then, I guess. If we don't, maybe she'll be cut into pieces. Kayama-san said, unnecessarily. Stop, stop saying such awful things. 
Kobayashi-san said, getting angry. <laughs> In any case, the best thing is to find her quickly and make sure that we're all together. There's women as well, Toshio-san said. I was in agreement with his opinion. Alright, well let's all go look for them. And make sure we don't get separated. After carefully thinking about it, Kobayashi-san nodded. Alright. So, Kayama-san, Mrs. Kayama-san, if you wouldn't mind, could you come to the second floor with me? Alright then. Just to be safe, we, we armed ourselves with our weapons once again. And coming together as a group, we headed upstairs to the second floor. We jostled together on the narrow stairs. Crowding around Kobayashi-san, all of us stood in front of Tanaka-san's room. Kobayashi-san went to open the door, but hesitated for a second. I presumed he was hesitant about getting closer to the dead body once again. You just called out to her, didn't you? He asked Mari. She nodded, and looking helpless, Kobayashi-san turned the knob. Cold wind blew from inside the room. Midori, you there? The only response was the sound of the wind. Gripping his ski ball in one hand, he peered into the bathroom. We watched him from the entrance. Looking carefully around the area where the dead body was, he returned quickly. It doesn't seem like she's here. Hey, Kobayashi, quick! Toshio-san shouted from the corridor. What is it? It's Jenny. She's... Toshio-san pointed to the end of the corridor. It was the closet where we had searched earlier. In front of the closet door, Jenny, the black cat, was meowing softly. Keeping silent, Kobayashi-san started to walk towards her. Jenny became aware of our presence. She began violently meowing. Kobayashi-san placed his hand on the doorknob of the closet, but was hesitant for some reason. What's wrong? It was just a cat cry, right? That was just... Koyama-san's grumbling was interrupted suddenly. Nobody was listening anyway. Kobayashi-san opened the door. And there was Midori. <sighs> The body was folded as if someone had tried to cram a doll into the closet. The 
the eyes were open wide, staring at us as if in shock. But the eyes did not move one iota. Midori. We could hear Tobiashi-san's whispering voice. Flustered Kobayashi-san took Midori's hands and checked her pulse. Finally, he turned around to everyone and shook his head without saying anything. you got to be kidding me. Toshio-san's lips began to shake. God damn it, what's going on? What is this bullshit? As if losing his mind, Toshio-san started to howl. He collapsed next to Midori's body and started crying. Midori! Midori! Midori had been beaten to death. Her head was split open and a large amount of blood covered her hair. This is awful. Marty gripped my arms so tightly that it hurt. Her face was scrunched up and her eyes were filled with tears from both fear and sadness. Toshio-san grabbed the mop that had fallen on the floor and stood up. Come out! Come out, you murdering motherfucker! I'm gonna get you! He shouted so loudly I thought his throat was going to burst. And beating on all of the wa walls and doors of the rooms, he walked around the corridor. Stop it, Toshio! Kobayashi-san, who tried to stop him, was cast aside as Toshio continued to storm down the hallway. As if they'd heard the fuss, one of the doors opened and Kanako peered out. But as she saw Toshio causing such a ruckus in the corridor, she panicked and closed the door again. Midori. Toshio-san suddenly stopped in his tracks and fell to the floor in the middle of the corridor, bawling his eyes out. Out of all the victims, so far, whether it was Tanaka-san or Mikimoto-san. They were all people that didn't have any direct connection to Toshio-san. They were people that weren't yet close to us. Those of us that were staying at the guest house that night. And as such, perhaps we'd thought that up until now, the incidents that had happened to them were as if that happened to complete strangers. But it was different with Melody. She was a close colleague of the Kobayashis, as well as Toshio-san. And judging from the way Toshio-san was, it seemed as if she was much closer to him. The body that had been cut into pieces 
brought forth fear and angst. But upon experiencing Midori's death, all it bestowed was anger and sadness. Anger and sadness that resisted against the fear and the unease. Mari. What? You've got to convince the women to come out. I'm going to take, go and check on Mikimoto-san. Without listening for Mari's reply, I open the door to Mikimoto-san's room. Mikimoto-san's head was wrapped in bandage. And he was laid out on the bed. His face was pale and his eyes were closed. It was as if he was dead. Mikimoto-san. As I called his name, he let out a slow groan and opened his eyes, as if he had been sleeping. I think it's safer if everyone's together. So, if it's alright with you, I think you should come downstairs. Can he walk? Uh, it hurts. It seems like it was difficult for him to even get up. Let me give you a hand. Ah, next. Mikimoto-san climbed off the bed and stood up. I think I can make it. He began to walk, shaking from side to side. When we left the room, everybody was waiting. Three women had come out into the corridor as well. Let's all go to the lounge for the time being. I said to everyone. As I began to walk down the stairs, Kobayashi-san came to help me carry Mikimoto-san. Thanks. As I thanked him, Kobayashi-san looked down to the corner of the corridor and said, Perhaps we should leave him alone for a while. Following the way he was looking, I saw Midori-san and Toshio-san. Alright everyone, let's head downstairs. As if me saying so was some kind of sign, everybody started to move. Three of us in lead, then Mari, the women, the Kayamas, and then lastly, Kyoko. Everybody slowly descended the stairs. does it for tonight's installment of Sounds Like Kaidan Time. Well, hope you all enjoyed the developments that happened this evening. <laughs>